Hello everybody, my name is Kate Cahey. I'm a senior scientist at Argo National Lab at the University of Chicago, and I'm a PI of a fantastic project called Chameleon. Chameleon is an experimental testbed that supports computer science systems research. It is also a partnership of four institutions whose logos you see um, at the bottom of the screen. And I have the privilege of working with many talented individuals whose names you see here and who are my co-authors on the paper. So before we start, uh, a few basic facts about Chameleon. So first of all, like its real life namesake, Chameleon likes to change. In particular, it likes to adapt itself to your experimental needs. So that means that we support deep reconfigurability, we support custom kernel boot, serial console, etc. In terms of hardware configuration, Chameleon is distributed over two sites, University of Chicago and the Texas Advanced Computing Center connected by a 100G network, so you can support experiments with large flows. Our largest investment in hardware is 10-rack partition of Intel Haswell nodes, so those are hundreds of nodes, you can create very large allocations there. And we also have almost 6 petabytes of storage, most of that is configured as global store that supports experimental data, but some of it is configured uh, as part of nodes to support interesting experimental configuration. So that is our investment in scale. In addition to that, we also support hardware diversity via smaller clusters of ARMS, Atoms. Um, we've got a cluster of PGAs, we've got five different GPUs. Uh, we have Corsa switches, InfiniBand Interconnect, um, etc. An important thing to know about Chameleon is that unlike many other uh, academic resources supporting systems research, Chameleon is built on top of a mainstream open source infrastructure called OpenStack. So Chameleon is in practice an OpenStack cloud that we greatly extended and augmented to support our use case. Chameleon has been in existence for almost five years. During that time, we supported over 4,000 users. So how do you evaluate an experimental infrastructure? So first of all, um, our, our mission when we first started out was to provide a platform for computer science research, but you can break that down into two dimensions. One is supporting the broadest set of experiments you can, and then the second dimension, of course, supporting as many users as you can. And to populate those dimensions a little bit, if you think about traditional HPC resources, well, of course, you can support some computer science experiments on them, but not many. Virtualized crowd resources are, of course, much more flexible. And then bare metal resources like Chameleon are, of course, the most flexible. You don't have that hypervisor layer between you and the hardware. And if you can think of, of a custom testbed that has been built from hardware app to support your needs, that might be even better but then it might be not interesting to many, to quite as many users. So balancing this um, experiments against experimenters is what we're trying to do. Now, the factors that influence how many experiments you can support are, of course, hardware. How is the hardware available? How can the users get at that hardware? In other words, how expressive your interfaces are and support for configurability and isolation. On the user side, those factors are cost per user and experiment, as well as factors such as usability and familiarity that allow us to support this testbed for a very broad range of users. So this is what we were thinking when we started out with the testbed. What we learned uh, during running the testbed, during operating the testbed, is that there is in fact a third dimension um, that increases the efficiency of research on the testbed and this is how well we can orchestrate sharing between our users. And the factors that support that, of course, are how well you can package experiments and how well you can support their publication and discovery. So this is really the layout of my talk today. I'm going to talk about um, uh, the broadest range of experiments that we can support and how we do that, um, how do we support many users and how that works out and how in our support for sharing. So starting out with the experiments we support, of course, hardware is, is a very important factor there. And uh, the graph that you see here essentially shows what percentage of a specific resource type 
was available over what percentage of time. And so you can see that towards the bottom of the graph here, we've got our most utilized resources, and those are unsurprisingly uh, the various GPU clusters, followed by our um, uh, memory hierarchy nodes, which have almost a terabyte uh, of memory and non-volatile memory, as well as various SDDs, to allow you to support specialized experiments. The center is occupied by our large-scale resources, Haswells and Skylakes, and then finally towards the top of the graph, the least utilized resources are ARMS atoms and, and low-power zeals. The largest lease ever created in Chameleon was 120 nodes. Most users just use a single node, which means that our investment in scale uh, was in fact um, uh, quite sufficient. And in fact, as we upgraded Haswells to Skylakes, those are now uh, smaller partitions. Now, when you have resources with varying demand, the question arises, how well can you arbitrate access to those resources among various users? So, uh, for example, if we take our most used um, uh, resource on Chameleon, the GPUs, you can see from the graphs here that, that the users typically ask for just one GPU, right? But, generally speaking, most requests, they have to ask for it a few days in advance, right? So if we only support it on demand, those users would not be able to get those resources. This is why we created the abstraction of an allocatable resource that allows you to take a collection of resources, and that could be nodes, networks, IP addresses, whatever you need for your experiments, and then manage the allocation in time, so both in terms of start time and end time. So managing it in terms of start time allows you to make an advanced reservation. On demand is, of course, a special case of an advanced reservation with start time set to now. And this is what the users of these GPU resources here use in order to make an advanced reservation to, or to reserve their resource uh, a few days ahead. Now, if you look at a, at a much more abandoned resource on Chameleon, at the Compute Haswell resources, of course, you see that since there are many more of them, most of the usage is, is centered at this uh, on-demand corner here. But when you use it Skylake, so there are fewer Skylakes than Haswells, though it's still a resource that is meant to be used um, at large scale, you can see that most of the data points sit in this triangle here where users request uh, a large amounts of nodes, but in advance, right? So the, uh, the abstraction of, of allocatable resource, the advanced reservation in particular, worked out well for us to arbitrate access to testbed resources. The extensions, uh, users can extend the lease. On the 5% of leases so far use the extension. That's a feature that we introduced relatively recently. Um, and it's also a feature that sometimes might not be just very useful because uh, somebody may have made uh, an advanced reservation behind you and then you simply can't extend your lease. Here is a rundown of uh, some other decisions that we made uh, on the testbed. Uh, the first decision, how are the resources specified when you request them to, um, uh, when you come to the testbed and request them? So there are two schools of thought here. One school says that you should specify them in terms of model. So for example, you should say something like, I want two nodes with at least two gigabytes memory and on the same switch. Right? And that could be instantiated over many different nodes. And another school that says, well, I'd like to be able to specify the exact hardware that I'm using in order to uh, eliminate the influence of, of performance variability. Uh, we support both methods. And as you can see from the numbers here, the most common approach is for users to uh, request a hardware type. So users come to the testbed and say something like, I want a Haswell node, or I want a Skylake node, or I want a node with a specific type of GPU, right? or a node that has this much memory or, or something like that. But some of them do request for uh, a, a specific node. Typically, those are experiments that work on power management or simply users that want to eliminate performance variability as a factor just for the peace of mind. Um, the second decision that we made was to separate the process of allocation and configuration. If you go to commercial cloud and uh, you deploy an instance and then you want to change the image, 
you have to deploy another instance, right? In Chameleon, we anticipate that the DAR users will make an allocation and then they will want to change the instances often uh, to do a performance study, for example, over various different configurations. And that, in fact, turned out to be right on the money. As you can see, 20% of allocations had more than one instance deployed on them. And then uh, to support networking experiments, uh, we provide support for network switching, as well as for bring your own controller, which is a way to allocate and configure your own network switch. And, and those are relatively, those are capabilities that were introduced relatively recently, but as you can see, um, some proportion of projects use them. And then finally, many experiments are complex. They don't consist of just one node, they consist of many nodes, potentially many switches, networks between them, and so forth. That is sometimes complex to configure, and unless you automate this process, your experiment will not be repeatable. So orchestration is a process that allows you to automate your experimental configuration, right? So make sure that all the nodes are configured in such a way that they can communicate together, uh, that all this complex uh, experimental topology is configured as desired and works. And in Chameleon, we use an OpenStack service called Heat to perform orchestration. It's not the only method. You can also use scripting, and some of our users do. And in particular, most recently, many users simply use Jupyter to uh, implement orchestration. But as you can use, uh, as you can see, um, the use of Heat since we introduced it in 2017 has been raising steadily, which means that. Uh, more and more users are orchestrating Chameleon deployment. And then finally, automated deployment that simply says if you already have a heat template, if you automated your experiment, um, it can be triggered when your advanced reservation starts, right? So if your advanced reservation for your GPU starts at 3 a.m. in the morning, uh, you can uh, trigger the, uh, the configuration process, which could take uh, several hours. Um, and, and it's going to be ready when you show up for work in the morning. All right, so moving on to supporting users. Uh, cost is, of course, a significant factor. We, of course, try to minimize that by uh, optimizing our operations. So we rely heavily on smoke tests, live monitoring, and, and automated uh, remediation. We've got bots that, that go around and fix the test bed, make simple fixes. Um, we typically get uh, 13 help tickets, help desk tickets uh, per week. Help desk tickets is when users ask questions or they they flag problems that happen with the with the test bed. That's less than one ticket per user, so it's a it's a very manageable load. A, a huge factor in uh, taking down the cost of Chameleon is of course building on top of OpenStack. Right? Not only does that provide familiar interfaces, so another um, user factor, familiar interfaces for our users, because of course OpenStack has a very large deployment worldwide. If those interfaces are not familiar, users learn them and that's a transferable skill. They, they learn about cloud computing in the process. Um, we work with the large community that uh, OpenStack represents, and that means that it not only has thousands of contributors, but also thousands of reviewers, so there are many eyes on that code, which of course is an indirect benefit. There were many features that we were able to get by simply upgrading to OpenStack, which obviously reduces cost and, and is of benefit to the project. And we got access to existing OpenStack documentation and support system. We were also able to contribute back to OpenStack, in, in particular, um, our team for a time led the introduction of, of Blazar as an OpenStack component. So that's an important top level component and it's essentially the implementation of allocatable resources that I was talking about earlier. So those are all important practical benefits, but on, a, on an intellectual level, um, casting a test bed in terms of uh, a cloud infrastructure, a mainstream cloud infrastructure, also gives answer to the question can experimental computer science be supported on clouds, right? So um, Chameleon proves that it can and also proposes specific extensions that we just discussed that allow this to be supported. And not only does it answer this question, but also provides a, a practical embodiment of this answer in, in, uh, in the form of Chi in a box, 
which is a packaging of Chameleon, right? So now anybody could create a cloud like Chameleon, uh, whether in academia or in industry, if anybody's interested in, in uh, creating platforms that support computer science research. What does that look in practice? Here is a graph of our active users. An active user is, desi is defined as a user who has a running allocation on the system. So every month we we saw who logged in and, and ran an allocation. It had to, had to run something on the system in order to be counted. Um, the first thing that you see here is, of course, um, uh, active user and active project numbers are growing, but then also you see this very interesting CISO pattern. So what we see very consistently on the test bed is that usage peaks uh, as soon as the fall semester starts, then drops off at the end of the year as everybody goes um, uh, on holiday for Christmas and then picks up again with the beginning of the winter or, or spring semester, uh, intensifies in spring as there are many conference deadlines and then drops off again during the summer. Right? So in order to eliminate that, that CISO effect, we also computed trends and they show you that um, the testbed usage uh, has been growing. And then the next question we asked is how many leases do we have on the testbed? And the top graph on this slide shows you the number of active leases on the testbed. And, and you see again the CISO pattern, uh, but then you also see the trend that is growing, right? So you see um, leases at TAC in red and University of Chicago in green. TAC, of course, has uh, many more resources and can support many more re leases. And then finally, we asked how many simultaneous leases can we support? So we counted all the simultaneous leases running at the same time and took a max over every month uh, of those leases. And we see that those leases are growing, but they only started growing maybe two years ago. They started really growing, right? So the test bed is becoming saturated. There is more and more use coming from, um, from users standing up various leases. Uh, who are our users? Uh, as you can see from the map up there, uh, they are mostly from the US, unsurprisingly, but we do have some international users. All in all, users from 168 institutions used Chameleon, 11 of them minority serving, and 19 from EBSCO regions. Um, in terms of research versus education, 45 education projects, that doesn't count training, so that's just education projects as in classes. Uh, used Chameleon, that amounts to a little bit over 8%, and they used 9% of total time. So that means that there is a balance between the average uh, allocation time used by research and education projects. Um, we've had 275 uh, publications reported to date. 75 of them are journal publications, and as you can see on the sidebar there, they have been growing. Publications are, of course, a lagging indicator it takes a while for them uh, to appear and, and be reported. In terms of field of science, unsurprisingly, uh, most users identify themselves as doing work in computer science. 12% uh, identify themselves as domain sciences. They generally do paradigm testing uh, for biology or physics or astronomy uh, or some other sciences. 17% uh, are in machine learning. Again, uh, not surprising, given our high utilization of the uh, GPU resources, 10% in security, and interestingly, about 8% identified themselves as edge computing. And of course, one measure on how satisfied you users are is whether they come back. So it's interesting to note that we had 75% of renewals over the eligible projects, and some of them renewed multiple times. So in other words, users are happy enough to come back. Moving on to sharing experiments now, one very important insight from Chameleon was that clouds lead to the creation of digital artifacts such as images and orchestration templates, or thousands of images and orchestration templates in Chameleon's case, that are compatible with the testbed and that package an experiment. Right? So as a side effect of, of using the test, but you had to create an image, you had to create an orchestration template, and now that means that somebody else could use those artifacts to reproduce your experiment more easily. So the question arises, what can we provide on top of that in order to make um, uh, repeatability of experiments easier. And then, of course, the testbed provides 
um, other things that aid reproducibility and repeatability are hardware's version, uh, users can version images, um, and of course can provide, um, can use orchestration services. So after some looking around, um, we found that Jupyter Notebooks provided a very good way of packaging an experiment. This is because they combine um, ideas in the form of text, process in the form of code, and results within one, one place. The one thing that uh, Jupyter Notebooks don't provide is support for very complex experimental containers, right? All the code runs in a Docker container, but what our users typically use are containers that look more like this, that have multiple nodes and multiple switches and networks, all with a complex configuration. So what we did is we integrated Jupyter Notebooks with Chameleon Testbed. We run a Jupyter Hub server for our users. You can log in with your Chameleon credentials. But also, and crucially, we provide interfaces to the testbed via Jupyter so that our users can create their complex experimental configurations. And there's a little, um, a little example that you can watch on, on how that works in practice. And then we're, of course, also working on name containers that will turn your Jupyter Notebook into a kind of multiplex terminal where you can work on code in distinct parts of your experimental configuration. And we've got um, a, a recent paper on that if you want to find out more. Okay, but so now we package this experiment and how do we publish it? How do we share it? How do we advertise it and make it findable for others? So, of course, we are used to our own publishing ecosystem in which we write papers that we then put in proceedings, get put in libraries, get indexed, so I can find them and then I can finally read that paper. And, and this, is, this publishing ecosystem was something that grew organically. And the question is, how can we reproduce something like this on the digital side, right? We already know that we have Chameleon on which you can replay various experimental configuration. You can package those experimental configuration using Jupyter, but what is missing? So one thing that is missing is, is a place, a kind of library in which to put those experiments where you can publish them that will give you digital object identifiers that you can now reference from your paper, right? You can reference from your paper that you've got those digital experiments that your reviewers and your readership can now reenact on Chameleon or, or some, someplace else. And it turns out that a place like that already exists. It's Zenodo. It's a wonderful digital publishing platform developed at CERN. So what we did is we integrated with that so that you can import various uh, digital artifacts that were published via Zenodo, but you can also very easily, with a click of a button, publish your own experiments via Zenodo, get those digital, ident uh, digital object identifiers and make them, make them citable. And we are working towards making this research findable, findable uh, in other words, developing a digital sharing platform. Okay, and a few parting thoughts. Um, the first, of course, is that Chameleon expresses the capabilities needed to support computer science research in terms of mainstream cloud functionality, in particular OpenStack. And our paper discusses the specific extensions and augmentations that we had to make to support um, our use case. But we also provide this as a practical delivery. We also provide a packaging of Chameleon infrastructure called ChinaBox, which not only packages all the system components and allows you to create a test bit like Chameleon yourself, but it also packages our uh, operational model and all we learned about operations of this type of infrastructure to make it efficient. Secondly, experimental test beds are more than just a platform for experimentation. They are an opportunity for sharing. So as we discussed, as a side effect of using the test bed, users produce images and orchestration templates that go a very long way, and sometimes all the way, towards packaging their experiment. So we need to find ways to help them share it and help them leverage the experiments of others and see if that will make our research more efficient. And one final thought is an experimental testbed is never done, right? An experimental testbed has to continually improve and continually grow chasing the research frontier. 
right? So it has to change as the opportunities in the science it supports emerges. And that's another big insight that we learned from Chameleon. Um, a test bit is never done. And with that, thank you very much for listening. If you have um, more questions, you can visit us at our site, chameleoncloud.org, or you can email me directly. Thanks very much.